For most of my life, I've been overweight. At this present moment, I'm still considered overweight, according to BMI standards. Now, at 44, in order to keep a balanced physique, I strength train for four to five days per week. For three days per week, I practice yoga. And for three to four days, depending on the time of the year, I walk. Prior to yoga, which I've practiced for about six months, I was walking five days a week. Now that may seem like a lot of effort and many may say that they don't have enough time, but cumulatively, this only takes about two hours per day, one hour of strength training, and on the days of yoga, one hour of yoga, and then an hour of walking. In order to find time, I watch limited media, including YouTube, and I couldn't tell you who are the contenders for MVP or converse about any cliffhanger that is on TV. And I just consider that the price of self-improvement. Observing and adjusting yourself to your journey, to your goals. Anytime I've added more fat mass, more than I'd like, it was from not engaging in walking. You see, no diet change is necessary. I eat the same options year round. I participate in intermittent fasting and I have a diet that is biased more in protein and moderate dietary fat and i try to keep my carbs in line with my goals and i stay away from processed foods yes walking is burning more calories than when i'm not walking but walking especially in the manner that i advise is the most effortless way of burning fat you see it takes almost to little no effort to take a few laps in the park and if you're lucky enough the trail may take longer than an hour to complete averting boredom you won't even notice until you're finished. In comparison to high intensity interval training, jogging, sprinting, and jump rope, the recovery is much easier when you're walking and I retain more of my muscle mass. Outside of sprinting, I don't feel that there are any more muscle mass benefits than walking. For most people who are struggling to get their body in balance, this is the most accessible way. I believe a combination of resistance training and walking to be the best combination. And if you find that you are in pain often, I would also incorporate some yoga or daily stretching. In fact, you can combine both. During a walk at every eight to 10 minute mark, you can engage in push-ups. And if you find push-ups too difficult, then use a bench as elevation, or if that's too hard, try a wall. Run again for eight minutes, and at the next interval, perform squats. And if that's too easy, incorporate a resistance band or practice a box squat variation onto a bench. And what you'll find is that as you go along, the next interval, you can incorporate different exercises. The options are absolutely endless. I recommend walking for a minimum of 20 minutes. I find the resistance to the activity subsides after that 20 minute mark. Once I pass that 20 minutes, it's as if the negative voice in my head gives up on dissuading me from continuing in my effort. Understand that this isn't the fastest way to burn fat. It would take 125 minutes of leisurely walking to burn 450 calories, but you don't need a gym membership nor special clothes or equipment. It can be done anywhere and has great mental benefits, especially when done outdoors. The positive effects for your physical and mental health from walking are immense, and we are at our best when we are in motion. And if you're feeling overwhelmed at the effort of going to the gym, or maybe in even changing your nutrition, start with just walking again for a minimum of 20 minutes. I mean, you're already walking every day. Now devote some intention to it and your body will thank you. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. This has been Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement.